Welcome to my video series for vir uh, virtual lab. Uh, what a virtual lab is, is anybody who's trying to uh, test some software or test some applications. If you're an IT person, you're looking to, to build a, a testing ground so you can learn new products or perhaps just test something before you put it live. Just show you an idea here. I have a VMware lab folder on one of my larger hard drives and it has a, I have Android, I have a Mac OS, I have Raspberry Pi, I have a server 2016, and I have a VMware Mac folder. Um, so I, I currently use a VMware Workstation, and this is what I, what I use my virtualization platform for. So if I go here to open, I can go and open one of my VM sessions that I have. So for instance, in here, VM Lab, and let's say if I want to open up a server 2016, once I open that up and put it in my inventory, it shows now I have a virtual computer. So you know you have a physical computer, the one you're using, this one here I'm using. It's a physical laptop. It's got uh, 20 gigs of RAM. It has a Core i7 processor in it. So it's a very powerful machine. So I could use multiple computers inside of it. So I have Windows 10 now. But what I want to do is I want to test server. So I can set up a, a virtual machine uh, with four gigs of RAM, two processors, 60 gigabyte, gigabytes of hard drive space, and printer, so forth. You could add all those functions. And when you go here to edit, you can actually change them. So if you want more memory, uh, you want more CPUs, you want to add more hard drive space, or maybe more hard drives, you can add another hard drive if you wanted to. Um, so there, I can add another hard drive, a floppy drive. I can add anything I want to add to, to this device. So this is a virtual computer. So when I turn this on, push play here, and what will happen is now my operating system will load up, giving me a full server operating system in a VM. So I could use it in there, or I can go back out here to my, my original OS and do whatever else I want to do. So what this does is allows you to keep things separate. So if you're looking for a testing ground test, of, uh, for instance, if you're trying to test a uh, Windows 7 or Windows 8 or or you, you haven't got Windows 10 yet, you want to see how it works, if you want to learn how to use it, or perhaps there might be a Windows 10 uh, patch, you're not sure if it'll work well with your system, you could then play with it inside of this environment. So just to give you an idea here. So anybody who's familiar with this type of idea, um, I now have a server running. And in this particular server, I'm setting, I set up a, a wiki server. I've set up that here in IIS. So I have a web server set up on Windows server. I have, I have a media wiki server. I have a WordPress server. And if I want to try this, I can always try this by just browsing. So I have an actual WordPress server running on this machine. Now, your speed's gonna, going to vary on what you're doing with your computer. I have a lot of things running in the background. We're recording right now, so my system may be a little slower. But normally, this would be a little faster for me. And if I decide to throw more resources at it, it could. So this is my MediaWiki basic page. And if that's, sorry, the WordPress. If I want a PHP bulletin board, I could set up this, and it comes up a nice PHP bulletin board. So I could set up, if I want to set that up, I could set it up on the test machine. And same thing with the wiki. So the whole idea of this is I'm able to run this stuff in the VM in a virtual machine, and it's not really affecting my full, my other computer. So I could do all the testing I want in this. I can also connect to it. So if I were to pull up a browser, so in here, let's say if I go here, there's the address. So if I go to that address from my browser outside the VM, I should be able to go there without a problem. So there's my media wiki. So there it is there. So if I want to go to the WordPress, I do WordPress. WordPress. 
it, I called it a wiki. But yes, so that, that shows that I can get to this server from my Windows 10 machine. So this is all on, on my same computer, but this thinks it's a different place. So it's just a matter of going in and out of your, your testing grounds. But I just wanted to show you what what the purpose of having a virtual lab would be. If you are in the IT field, the idea of, of a lab would be if you're learning something, if you're learning a new product, you want to play with a PowerShell setup, or you want to set up an exchange server and figure out how do I actually set it up if you've never done so. Uh, if you want to play with Apache or you want to play with IIS and you want to figure out something before you blow it up in another environment. The thing with this environment, it allows me to do whatever I want. I could do anything I want with this server and it's not going to affect my other computer. See, it has a 60 gig drive I gave it. And out here, I have all my, my computer, all my stuff, nothing related. Wait, so my C drive, there it is there. So it just shows that that's separate. So this here holds the information that I'm doing all my testing in. And the other, this is outside the computer. So same thing, if I wanted to test a Mac, I could also test a Mac too. So inside my folder here, I now have a Mac. So let's show you the Mac. Now the Mac takes a little time to boot up. It's not because, well, it's not supposed to work on a PC. Now this virtualized Mac, I'm not suggesting you don't have to go buy a Mac now. I only use this for testing, just to test to show people, some people want me to show them how to install a piece of software or something. So I just use this as my quick and, quick and easy way to, to show how, how, that I know how to get around in the operating system. So I use this as my test environment. It's no, in no way saying you should do this. Um, it takes a little time to set this up. There's plenty of resources out there to do it. I may create a video to actually show this uh, because for a testing environment, I see nothing wrong with this. Um, I've purchased the OS. I went and bought it on the, on the, the iTunes store quite a few years ago. I bought the other versions and I'm glad to buy it. It's not that expensive. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind paying for it to use it in my test environment. And same with the windows. I downloaded a copy from Microsoft's website. And I'm using the ISO I have, and this lets me test it. And when it runs out to trial, I just restart it again. So this is just an idea to show you. I'll even show you another one. So we'll go back. Hi. And, and as you can see, as you can see, I'm running different operating systems. Right, there's my Mac. Now the Mac wants to be full screen. I could just pull it full screen. Right there it is there. Go back out. I just bring it back down. So using VMware product gives you a lot of functionality to do things you might want to do. There's a Raspberry Pi. So I have a virtual Raspberry Pi. I have a virtual Mac. I have a virtual Windows machine. And it's it's not you're not limited to you're just sticking with those items you can go get a linux machine i can i can do a, a, an android marshmallow machine turn that on i'm only limited by the amount of memory i have on my machine so if i show you here that i'm using four gigabytes of memory for this server and the mac i've allocated four gigabytes of ram as well and the raspberry pi I've also allocated one gigabyte of RAM, so there's nine. And the Marshmallow, Marshmallow have allocated eight gigabytes of RAM. So I've got eight, nine, four, 13, and four more, 17. 17 gigabytes of RAM I'm using on this. So that would come out of my Windows system that I'm using. So, so that just goes to show what I can do in a virtual lab. So the intent of this video is just to show you what a virtual lab could be used for. And if you're interested in learning more about the virtual lab, I intend to continue the video series. This will be the video one of the series, and I'll just keep going. So with this, we can shut off the VM, and that shuts it down. Now, if you get stuck in there with the mouse, you can hit your Control-Alt key to, to, to bring your mouse out. So there's Android there. It's going to boot up, back out. Here's my Mac. Hit 
it shut down. So that shuts down that one. Windows, I can go in here. Here, so it's not shadowed. And I could shut down Windows. So all these systems are shutting down. So it, it just goes to show you can do as many things as you want with with the virtualization platform. Now, like I said, I use VMware Workstation. This one here costs money. Right? It is it is a uh, a product that does cost money. I'm using version 12.5. I bought this many years ago. Um, you can also go to the website you can download it for free as a test i think you have 90 days um you can get the free one which is called VirtualBox. um i have a little more f functionality i'm i'm a vmware person i'm a certified vmware uh so i utilize a vmware product because i just i just like the way it works and the functionality it has and some functions you can do in here that you can't do with other virtualization platforms uh virtual box is a good software uh, it has some problems going to certain versions with certain versions of Windows 10, for instance, at first. Uh, I think now they've got it all solved. It gives you, you could use it for Mac or PC. So you have different versions. It's all free. Um, if you're a Microsoft Windows user, there is a, a Hyper-V on Windows 10, and that gives you the same idea. It's very similar to this. It's just a different software that gives you the virtualization. And if you're a Linux user, there's also stuff built into Linux as well. But for primary, uh, my videos, I'm going to go through the VMware series because I am using VMware. Uh, maybe I'll create another series to use uh, the Oracle VirtualBox as well. But for starters, let's start with, uh, with the VMware product. So I would suggest going to Downloads and you just look for Workstation Pro. If you're a Mac user, go to Fusion. It's the same thing, but only it's called Fusion. So Workstation Pro, you can download it. There's 14, version 14 is the latest one. Um, you can download the free trial, use it. And then if you decide to use 12, you could use 12 here instead. So they went 12 to 14. They didn't create 13. 13 is the unlucky number. So this product here will give you the functionality like this. Uh, so I can use as many as I want. So that's what this first video is about, is getting this downloaded. So once you get it downloaded, run the installer. Uh, we will do that the next video. I just wanted to start the video showing that start off is here you go. We have this uh, this VMware product. So VMware Workstation, and it is version 12.5.9. That's the one I'm going to use. And so the next video, we will go through the installation process of how to get the VMware Workstation installed. And then we will go up to our very first VM. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.